This video shows the manufacturing process to make this bidirectional bellow that also has 10 magnetic dome actuators located around the outside. The bottom mold assembly consists of individual pieces for each of the magnetic dome actuators that have to be inserted, as well as a larger bottom plate that can be removed to push out the mold when it's done. We complete the top mold assembly, which has a wire metal mesh and a magnet behind it. The wire metal mesh holds the magnets in place because the silicone cannot bond directly to the magnet. The silicone instead can impregnate on the wire metal mesh and hold the magnet back. We do this for each of the magnetic dome assemblies. We complete this small cap assembly using this silicone tubing that's wrapped around so that the peristaltic pump can fit on this, and then we cut it to the right length. The perforations in the cap allow silicone to impregnate it. Now we take the soft cores and the cap assembly, and we insert the soft cores into the silicone tubing to plug it. We align them next to each other, and then we insert them into the mold. Then we insert these metal rods, two for each soft core, through them and into the cap assembly that helps keep those elevated and aligned. We then insert a larger metal rod in the bottom to act as a tube routing channel. We insert a large metal mesh down the neutral axis, which prevents extension but allows for bending. We also insert metal mesh around the hoop of each of the dome actuators. This prevents expansion in the radial direction and allows all of that force to go in the magnetic dome actuator at the tip. We now can assemble the top and bottom molds. We use fasteners with large washers so we can spread out the clamping force over a larger area, thus preventing flashing and other unwanted silicone squirting into parts of the mold. We are now ready to injection mold. With a new cartridge, we need to purge both materials until they come out at the same amount. We can then get a static mixing nozzle and attach it to the cartridge and dispense for a little bit until the material is fully mixed and we see no striations between parts A and B. We can then inject directly into the mold and wait until we see silicone popping out at the farthest sprue and no bubbles remaining. After the part is cured, we then need to remove all excess silicone and the rods that we put in earlier. We also need to remove all the fasteners to be able to get all the various pieces of the mold apart. We could then pry it apart and start taking those mold pieces out one by one. We then have to massage the part out, which is still pretty tight in there despite having mold release. Now we need to take the soft cores out. We start by blowing air through the soft core so that we can get the bellows a little bit inflated, which separate the soft core from the desired part. Next, we're gonna pull out the soft core, first using a parallel jaw plier until we have enough soft core exposed to start pulling by hand. This material is highly extensible, up to 1,000% of its original length, which makes it a great material to pull out as a soft core. We're gonna do the same for the other side. Once we have the soft cores removed, we can then clean up the part. We're gonna cut off all of the excess material that went through the sprues, and we also need to clean out all of the magnetic actuators with alcohol to make sure it bonds well to the next process. Now we need to cap the end openings. To do this, we have a 3D printed cap piece that gets inserted, which prevents silicone from getting further in the mold. We push these in and then pull them forward so they're as close to the tip as possible. We do this for both sides. Then we put it in our final mold and we put rods behind those pieces to hold them in place. We then add fasteners to lightly clamp the mold together before we're ready for molding. Each one of the dome actuators requires its own injection port, requiring 0.7 milliliters of silicone. We use a syringe to precisely meter this, and once done, we remove the syringe and cap it individually. We do this for each of the 10 magnetic dome actuators. We also need to add silicone to the end cap. We do this with a syringe as well, and using a tweezers, we get rid of any air bubbles. Once cured, we can remove our mold assembly, removing all the fasteners, lure locks, and rods. We then pry our mold apart, 
and then massage it out, removing any excess silicone and using a flathead screwdriver to pop the mold out from both ends. Our actuator is finished.